Hey everybody, I'm so glad you're joining us today on this kind of cloudy and rainy day. We're praying that all the rain will be done by Saturday and that we'll have a beautiful day out Sunday morning as we do drive-in worship Sunday morning in our parking lot at Carolina's Cornerstone Church. And we want you to be a part of that. And we're praying as you can kind of look around and you see the paint buckets and we've got carpets being cleaned and ACs being serviced and the buildings being cleaned up. What we're discovering is, is that we're trying to get ready for the people to come back to the church. And we're hoping to be able to announce that on this coming Friday, and so we can be able to tell you what's going to be happening coming up soon. Today, I want to continue on what I started yesterday on love. I don't know about you, but where does love come from? I mean, you could take, for example, we can diagnose something and tell you where it started. So let me give you an example. Cheer wine. Just a couple of weeks ago, Cheerwine celebrated its birthday. It was formed in 1917, right there in North Carolina, and it was formed. So you can kind of put your finger on it and know exactly how good it is. Oh, by the way, it's my second favorite drink. You know, the first one, Sundrop, of course. So what happens in this, we, need, we can look at Webster. Webster tells us that love is an intense feeling and a deep affection. Now, you know, some folks have deep feelings and affection for their dogs or their cats. But it may be like this. It's a great interest in pleasing something. Someone might say, I love football. But that's not the kind of love I'm talking about today. We need to get to the starting point to see where love was at. God wants us to love because he is love. Now hear me out. God is love. He created us, you and I, to love him. 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says, Love comes from God because he is God. In Ephesians, Paul writes in 5, 1, we need to be, be imitators of Christ. We were created in the image of God. And there are two things on earth that God wants us to do. Now, now just think about it. You've been created. There was nothing else created in the image of God except you. Those who are human people were created in the image of God. We learn two things. Learn to love God and learn to love others. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times here in this church. The way we love God is by loving others. The way that we serve God is by serving others. Life is about love, love, love. But love started with God. He loved us first and then he gives us the ability to love others. Now, God would have never given you an assignment such as this if he was wanting you to not to know how to do something. When God gives you something to do, my friend, I promise you that God's going to give you the ability to do everything he's asking you to do. So I don't want to just want to talk about it. I don't want to just read about it. I don't want to discuss about it. I want to have an encounter with God, the creator of love. I want a relationship with him so that I can be loved and he always know that I am loved. See, one of the things as we grow in our Christian faith, we begin to realize that God wants to reveal to us completely love and unconditional love. And so the problems begin. How do we love someone unconditionally? Well, the only way you're ever going to be able to do that is to love God and he loves you back. So what does the Bible say about love? Now, love is used hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times in Scripture. But I want to kind of narrow it down to four things about love. 2 John 1.16 says, Love means doing what God has commanded us. When God commands us, it's not a suggestion. He wants us to do certain things. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Bible says that love is a command. We need to realize that God has commanded us to love each other. And what happens, what creates the problem for us about loving people is that we get our feelings and our emotions involved and we take and judge things. For example, if someone does us wrong, we come back and say, well, I don't, I, I'm not going to do that. In my devotion this morning, it was reminding me about forgiveness. And it says that you have to remember that forgiveness, forgiveness itself, must be given because God has given that to you. Same thing with love. You can't always can control your emotions. 
Uh, you, some, you know, we, we're not in command of all of our emotions. Sometimes things happen and we become very emotional. But, but I just want to re- reiterate here that God will give you the abilities to go through love and loving people. So this means that love is not a feeling. Imagine this. Man, you have several children and one of them little kids are, are crying and all upset and just, you know, you walk over and say, I command you to be happy. How, how's that going to work out for you? Or maybe you go over and say, I, I command you to stop crying. That just adds to it. Trust me, I've been down that path. You simply can't command someone's feelings. There's no certain way. And, and we need to realize that. So that we need to understand that God is commanding us to love people, whether they love us back or not. The second thing I've learned about from the scriptures is that love is a choice. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 from the Message Bible says this, Go after life of love as if your life depended on it, and it does. And we begin to read this as Paul is writing this, that Paul himself was having to learn how to love others like God loved him. So for us, we need to understand when you see the terminology here in the in this scripture, go after it, it means that you are making a choice to love someone. So love is a choice. And when we choose, we choose to love or not to love. And it is crucial that we choose love. By acting in love, whether you feel like it or not, can I just teach you something I've had to learn? There are times when I don't feel like loving people. But what I've learned when, when I don't feel like it, and I do it anyway, it's actually more rewarding. Because what happens when I feel like it, it's easy to do. So there's a test that happens all the time to us. It's one thing to love when the flowers are blooming and everything's going well. But the real test of love is when it's wintertime in a relationship. When things are not going great in life. And we have to understand, in spite of that, we still have to love people. We have to meet their needs. We have to, we have to teach them and help them. And you may think that they don't even deserve it, but God does. So God chooses to love others as God loves us. And then the third thing is we begin to realize the Bible talks about conduct. Now, love is something that you do. 1 John 3, 18 says, Let us stop just saying we love people. Let us really love them and show them by our actions. That little song that we learned in the 70s said, They'll know we are Christians by what? By our love. Every day, God puts opportunities around us to demonstrate love to people. Walmart, work, gas station, church. The problem is most of us are too too busy. Even in this pandemic time, we are using the excuse, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. So let me give you the rewind your mind. How many times have you thought, well, I need to call so-and-so. I need to encourage that person at work. I need to help my neighbor. But you didn't do it. You had a missed opportunity because something else came up. The key here is love takes advantages of opportunities to serve others. And then finally, commitment. The Bible says we are to be committed. First John four sixteen says, God is love. If we keep on loving others, we will stay one in our hearts with God and he will stay one with us. Our relationship with God is largely affected by our relationships with other people. If we commit to stay in love with people, he stays committed to us and stay in love with us. The bottom line is this. You cannot give others something that you have not received yourself. Today, I want to offer you the gift of love. His name is Jesus Christ. So I want us to pray for some folks. In our church today, I want us to be praying for... um, for our return to the church whenever that's going to be. I'm praying for David O'Keefe that he would just be, just be able to get up and rise and walk. We're praying for Jill Geisman's mom, Joanne Ashley. She's having uh, an MRI today. We want to pray for Ann Grantham, who's taking chemo, for Linda Melton as she starts in phase two, for Rita Evans. I ask you to pray for that family. Uh, they, I just want you to pray that God would do a miracle. Benny Riblin, John Pelletier, and I just want us to pray for the world. We have 5.7 million people that are infected with the coronavirus. And in the world, 2.8 
have recovered. That's about 43%. That's great news. In the United States, things are getting better. We have just certain areas of little pop-ups. And every day we're testing more. Pray for the doctors. Pray for the scientists and those that are trying to come up with a cure. Pray for your president. Pray for the governor. Pray for the leadership of this community. Would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, we lift up our world to you. God, use this to draw us back to you. Help us to feel your presence and touch by your love. Lord, today I ask that you would remove the problems that we have in the world and that they would see you. The coronavirus, we pray for a vaccine. We pray for our scientists and doctors. We pray for those on the front line, our hospitals, our nurses, and our doctors, and all the techs that work involved, and everybody who's doing it. Keep them safe. Lord, today I pray for our president, for our governors, our mayors, and our leadership around us. Pray for the church, Lord, as we try to make our way back. So, Lord, today I especially lift up Rita Evans. I ask you, Lord, for a miracle for her life. I pray for Ann Grantham. Lord, I pray for Ms. Linda Melton. I pray, Lord, for David O'Keefe, that you would rise him up. We pray for Jill's mom, that you would help her with the MRI. And Lord, for Benny and John, we pray for them. And Lord, we ask you right now to bless our church. Help us. Make sure, Lord, we're doing everything we can. So in closing, Lord, I pray that you would teach us how to love. And the love was demonstrated by your son Jesus dying on the cross for our sins of the past, present, and future. That's how much he loves us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you to have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow as we continue on talking about love. But you begin to pray for our service on Sunday morning. It's going to be a drive-in service at 10 a.m. here at Carolina Cornerstone Church. Invite all your friends and come in and have a good time with us.